Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So we are gathered here today for yet another Doja Cat update because she's been ranting on Twitter again. Most recently, she's called her last two albums mediocre pop and called them cash grabs, and people are not taking too kindly to that, so let's not waste any time and just go ahead and get right into it. So as always with Doja, this is mostly going down on Twitter. And where we left off last time was when she was saying that she was going to be taking a break from Twitter for a little while. On April 28th, she tweeted, I'm also aware of the ramifications of the last tweet and that I'll only be seeing edits of me with hair for the next four weeks, so I'll be logging off and deleting Twitter until my lead comes out. She then doubled down in a second tweet, again affirming she was leaving Twitter. About a week later, Doja returned to Twitter, retweeting statements saying she does everything for attention. Based on her prior tweet, some thought this meant she had news about her album, but no lead single was announced. Days later, Doja tweeted, My comment section on IG used to be only positivity because I was doing what everyone wanted me to do, and I love that I can see through all the bullshit now. It's nice. Much love to everyone else that's been down since day one. I appreciate it. On May 9th, Doja Cat received Songwriter of the Year Award at the BMI Pop Awards for her writing on Planet Her, primarily the singles like Get Into It, Need to Know, and Woman. That same day, Doja made the tweet that had everyone up in arms. She stated, Planet Her and Hot Pink were cash grabs and y'all fell for it. Now I can go disappear somewhere and touch grass with my loved ones on an island while y'all weep for mediocre pop. A lot of fans didn't particularly like Doja saying her fans fell for her music as if it was some kind of prank or social experiment. And I don't think it's because people are trying to tell Doja how to feel about her music, but because it seemed as if she was speaking down on her fans for enjoying it. And let me just say, I didn't fall for shit because those albums are good, whether Doja likes them now or not. I'm not sure why exactly Doja finds these albums to be mediocre, other than the fact that some songs are heavily pop and she doesn't want to do pop anymore. Obviously, they're way more pop influenced than her earlier works, but Doja herself has said both albums have more than just that Dr. Lukeified pop, and they do. Fans pointed out the irony in calling Hot Pink a cash grab when the album didn't even chart very well initially. Back in November of 2019, Hot Pink debuted at number 93 on the Billboard 200, selling only 7,900 units in its first week. Though it eventually peaked at number 9, several of the album's singles like Say So in Streets were sleeper hits and didn't become very popular until months after their release. Hot Pink was released just as Doja was gaining attention for the Juicy remix, the original version of which was on her debut album, Amala. The album blew up even more after Say So became a mega hit. It stands to reason that a major label back cash grab full of manufactured pop hits would have blown up much quicker and wouldn't have taken over six months to break the top 10 on Billboard. And while I think we can all understand Doja was tired of having to perform Say So every 30 seconds, that doesn't mean the song or the entire album is mediocre. Back in 2019, Doja told the LA Times she hoped Hot Pink was an album that would earn her more respect as a rapper and she'd never been more excited to make an album. So Doja can say she thinks the music is mediocre now, but even if she believes that, she can't rewrite history and say the album was intended to be a cash grab unless she was lying in interviews for no reason. Also, me personally, if I was making a cash grab album, I would do as little writing as humanly possible and just have my team pick songs for me and just have a very hands-off approach in general. Yet, while promoting Hot Pink, Doja maintained several times that this album would show that she was taking her music seriously. So seriously, in fact, that she stopped smoking to make the album, something she had said impaired her creation and her work ethic for her prior music. She said in her LA Times interview, My last album was me super high all the time. When I stopped and did this album, I had never been more concise and clear and level-headed. People will love me and hate me for it. Why doesn't she sound like she doesn't know what she's talking about anymore? I used to write stuff where it didn't matter. Now there are things I believe in that get me excited and piss me off. I'm actually reflecting on who I am as a person. And again, this just doesn't sound like something someone would say about a cash grab album that they didn't care about. But it seems like she has a pattern of downplaying her previous work when she's working on something new. A couple years later, when it was time to promote her third album, Planet Her, Doja seemed pretty proud of this record as well. She expressed excitement about her creativity and artistry in several interviews, calling the album unbelievable. Um, talk about why it was important for these two records to open up the album. I think woman in and of itself is a very like strong word and it's also a very strong song off of the project. I felt like that needed to be there just because it had a had a good message to it uh, compared to everything else. And yeah, it was one of my favorite verses I ever wrote. That second verse was I feel like one of my best uh, rap verses. And I just thought it was great to, to start it off with that. 
She said each song had its own vibe and that there would be more R&B on this album. She told MTV News, I kind of wanted to go outside of what I understood or what I knew as pop aesthetic or rap aesthetic. I wanted to quite literally travel outside of the planet. When it comes to the videos and choice of words and melodies and combinations musically, I wanted it to feel different. I wanted it to feel otherworldly. So I just named it Planet Her. In a 2021 interview with Complex, Doja explained her process in creating more versatile, out there weird songs as compared to Hot Pink. She said, I think when I say weird, it's more just things that stick out like a sore thumb. So with Hot Pink, that wasn't the issue for me. That wasn't something I wanted to avoid. I liked it being all over the place. And I felt like it gave it a more vibrant touch to the album to have those stick out like sore thumb moments. But for this album, I worked with one producer, Y2K, who has a very specific style. He's good at classic pop, but he does add hip hop elements into them more often than not, and I wanted to stay true to that. I worked with other producers on this project, but I wanted it to feel more sparkly and pretty and high energy and less like a circus. I don't know how to really describe it, but I mean when you listen, it's just very clean. I wanted everything to be very clean. I had songs that maybe sounded too Prince or a little too hip hop or something. In addition, it seems like Doja was of a completely different opinion last year when she won her first Grammy for Kiss Me More. First of all, Kiss Me More, you, you wrote, this is your writing, you collaborated. Yes. Yeah. Is this inspired by Olivia Newton-John, Let's Get Physical? Yes, okay. absolutely. That's overt, yes. on purpose. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I saw some comments where people were like, this unoriginal, you know, crap. I was just like, fuck it, let's go. Like, let me just put, you know, because I wanted to make a song about kissing, and then I, it just, it happened, and yeah. I was like, I definitely can tell the sounds like that, and I, I loved that riff, so I was like, fuck it. She began to cry during her acceptance speech and said, I like to downplay a lot of shit, but this is a big deal. And she did genuinely seem appreciative and happy. In less than two years, she went from saying she would be the kind of pop star she wanted to be, and realizing there was no one way to do pop or rap, to disliking her music. In my honest opinion, and I'm just making an assumption here, so feel free to disagree, I don't think Dozer really hates these albums, but more so the fact that the more pop-influenced songs are mostly the ones that went mainstream and really blew up. And we'll never know, but I think she would be singing a different tune, no pun intended, if some of the B-sides got to be singles instead, or got the same commercial attention as her more pop-influenced music. Because let's be real, an album made entirely of mediocre pop wouldn't have streets on it. It wouldn't have rules. It wouldn't have bottom bitch. And then for Planet Her, Needs to Know, which is a fan favorite, would not be on a mediocre pop album. Yeah, it has a trap pop influence, but this song has been called one of Doja's best songs, and in general, one of the more unique rap songs to be released in a while. You can go on several Reddit threads and see people who aren't even big Doja fans admit that Needs to Know is a masterpiece. One post from Hip Hop Heads I really agree with reads, Y'all literally just say that anything that is catchy nowadays is just a song made for TikTok. There's a reason songs end up on TikTok, and that's because they're catchy. It's obvious when an artist is pandering, and it's not the case with Doja. She just makes great music. Besides that, this single is great, and I enjoy it more than Kiss Me More. It sounds like with this album, she'll finally be coming into her own with her sound. There's just nobody else that sounds like her at this point. And I'm not even trying to be writing for Doja Cat like that, but it's just like, girl, you're not going to gaslight us for liking music that was actually good when a lot of people couldn't write music half as good, even if they tried twice as hard. And like she said herself, Planet Her does have a lot more R&B on it, and it's kind of similar to Amala in that way. Even some of the more poppy Planet Her songs like Get Into It and Up and Down do show immense talent, and they also sound like she's having fun while making them. And honestly, while I can hear the pop influence obviously, I would still classify these songs mostly as hip-hop, but what do I know? I truly think that at the end of the day, Doja does want to be seen more as a rapper than a pop star and no longer wants to be known as a pop star at the expense of losing credibility as a rapper. Because I'm sorry, I'm just not trusting someone who said, I don't play with my pen, I mean what I write, when they suddenly say that two entire albums are cash grabs. And I think it's entirely fair to not like your music as much as you used to, but shading your fans for liking music you put out just isn't the move. Especially because she's one of the few artists of this generation who is considered an indisputable talent. And even still, she does have several older songs on her debut album like Go to Town or even Juicy that have that more poppy sound to them and she didn't say anything about disliking them or them being cash grabs or mediocre. Yet she's also said in the past those records weren't as good as they could have been because she was smoking all the time. 
Genuinely, I think she didn't come for these albums recently because they were made before she blew up, so she doesn't associate them with her rise to fame, which she hates. But again, that is my personal speculation. And maybe this Twitter storm is just a start fresh for a new era with a clean slate. Because aside from her shaved head that she's been rocking for a while, Doja has been displaying a more alternative style over the past couple months and has been frequently debuting new tattoos. One of her most recent is of a bat skeleton on her back. She explained the meaning behind the tattoo saying, bats often represent death in the sense of letting go of the old and bringing in the new. They are symbols of transformation, of initiation, and the start of a new beginning. She also got another tattoo of one of Fortunio Lassetti's creatures from Damon Street. The illustrations of the creatures date back to 1665. They're meant to both celebrate and show interest in deformities in nature and reflect European interest at the time in so-called monstrosities. The drawings represent the intersection of the curiosities of the human imagination and the endless and unpredictable possibilities of nature. They reflect an enlightenment era understanding of biology paired with art and fiction. Doja posted a few of the drawings herself to Instagram, captioning the post, your fear is not my problem, along with an explanation of the images from Damon Street. Days later, Doja tweeted that her new album was named First of All rather than Hellmouth. Her Twitter bio now says First of All and finally, leading people to believe she might either be working on two albums or on a double-sided album. I have been seeing people say that one side of the album might be more hip-hop or alternative rap, and then the second side will be more pop-influenced. In response to being asked to sprinkle in some pop, Doja said that she won't, so take that how you will. And recently, Doja teased a snippet of a new song on Instagram. It has more of a classic hip-hop sound to it, and as Doja said it would be, the pop is absent. In the lyrics, she talks about being both thankful and grateful, and says I love y'all big at the end of the snippet. Maybe that's directed at her fans, but I'm not sure. She also says, I know I've been the root of the cause, I know I've had a temper before, which may partly allude to some of her public meltdowns over the last year or so. But without the full context of the song, we can't be entirely sure. Doja's also posted several troll tweets, like saying her new stage name was now MC Flapchunks the Third, and several stuff related to that that's clearly unserious, and personally, I think there's no point in trying to unpack. Several other replies on her tweets aren't expressing concern for Doja or just matching her energy with the same amount of sarcasm and apathy. Others are genuinely insulted, stating that while Doja has every right to dislike her older music, it's wrong for her to talk down to fans who have supported her. I saw a great tweet that I can no longer find saying that Doja was essentially mad at fans for liking music they've been unknowingly conditioned for years to like and want, rather than just understanding that sometimes that's the nature of being a mainstream artist. And I don't think that this is necessarily true in terms of Doja's lyricism because it is unique, but I think the person is saying this more so in regards to the more pop-heavy production on a lot of her more recent music. But that's the annoying thing about music. Typically, whatever is the most commercially digestible is going to be what blows up, and that's why we often see the more pop rap songs blow up in comparison to the more pure hip-hop songs. It also has to be difficult to hear so much feedback on your art in real time, and as easy as it is to say, oh, just ignore it. That's a lot easier to do in theory than practice. I think the only way to truly not be influenced or affected by it would be to take measures to not read it at all. Doja is extremely talented, but I can understand that other people saying that can still mean nothing if you yourself are unhappy with your art. And like I said, I wonder if she genuinely does hate her last two albums or if she just feels like she's been pigeonholed, which is understandable. But I do think most people tend to consider Doja to be a pretty versatile artist as she's showcased in all of her albums. No matter what, there are just going to be people that abandon her if she stops making top 40 pop rap. But honestly, I'll be listening to whatever she puts out and whatever this album turns out to be regardless. While I don't always trust what Doja says out loud or on social media, I do trust her skill and talent as a musician. I also think artists deserve the chance to switch things up and try new things with their music. Not all fans are going to like it, but I do think genuine fans will give it a chance and that's all you can ask. I don't think there's anything wrong with not standing by your previous music, but I do find it unproductive to call your fans' taste or support into question while doing it. Of course, Doja wants to weed out fake fans, and you shouldn't necessarily care what they think, but a lot of her diehard fans did love those albums too. Most people do have sympathy for artists who express frustration over their career, but bringing the fans into it will definitely affect some people's willingness to sympathize, and they have every right to feel that way. And at this point, it's just starting more Twitter drama with people bringing up Doja's chatroom past and some of her questionable songs that she's made in the past. And I also think calling her last two albums mediocre will only heighten expectations for this album. And artists don't have to make art or tweets with anyone in mind, but I do think if that's how they feel, then they have to keep that same energy if people decide not to buy their music. 
And it would suck if people stopped supporting Doja not because of her artistry, but because of her tweets, and it seems like some people are already at that point. And you know, barring anything else crazy or outlandish, I am hoping that my next Doja Cat update or announcement will come with either the album being announced or at very least the lead single. And I'm not entirely sure how many albums Doja still owes RCA, probably one or two or something like that. But I do hope if she decides to continue on with music after this, that she goes independent because I do feel like that would be what's best for her right now and that she would thrive as an independent artist. I mean, she's already doing well commercially, but I think just thrive all around as an independent artist. But yeah, of course, be sure to let me know your thoughts on this, whether you think Doja actually feels like Hot Pink and Planet Her were mediocre pop cash grabs. And you know, maybe she does. We don't really know what's going on inside of her head. And of course, let me know in general how you feel about her tweets and whether you are excited for first of all or finally or first of all and finally, whatever the album will be called. Um, it is like 10 p.m. the night before this video is supposed to upload, but I just want to acknowledge that Doja has again tweeted and said that the album will no longer be called First of All and now her Twitter header, bio, bio description, whatever, now says that she doesn't know what the album will be called. So I just want to acknowledge that all of that happened after I edited this video. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stick around for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter if you'd like to keep up with me there. And if you'd like to become a channel member, the link is in the video's description. Again, thank you so very much for watching. I love you so very much, and I will see you so very soon. Bye-bye.